Good afternoon or good evening, everybody. How is everybody doing today? Go ahead and hit me up in the like. Give me some hearts. Give me some likes. All that good stuff. Um, we are coming to you today with our second episode. Uh, second episode today um, from Big South Productions. Um, episode entitled... Our episode entitled today is The Right Mic in the Right Place. So we got a lot of good people um, that's going to be joining us today. Um, a lot of good of my friends. I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to add, um, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to add them to the screen right now. So uh, everybody, uh, let's welcome these great, these great, these great men. Um, I call my friends. Uh, yeah, I call them my friends. Uh, I appreciate everything that they do. Um, every time they help me out with any situation that I may encounter of that I may have. Um, so, uh, I'm going to bring in Rob. How you doing tonight, Rob? I'm all right. How y'all? All right. And I'm also yeah. bringing yeah. DeAndre. How you doing, DeAndre? Hey, I'm doing well. And yourself? I'm doing quite well. So, uh, I want everybody, if you're in the comments, if you're watching, I see we got eight people watching right now. And I'm looking for that number just to go up and up and up. Uh, we got a good topic tonight. We are talking about the right mic in the right place. Um, one of the things in about perfecting the, the medium that we have to make sure that we're doing uh, is that we make sure that our mic, uh, that we use the right mic for whatever situation that we're, we're using it. But we also want to make sure that that mic is actually in the right place. Just like I'm fixing my mic right now. Yes. So, uh, yeah. So, um, I'm gonna let them introduce themselves. Uh, go ahead, Rob, introduce yourself and then Deandre, you can go ahead and introduce yourself. Well, thanks. Um, Sydney Alexander, I'm going to go ahead. I saw your whole name pulled out there. <laughs> Government name. Um, I'm, I'm Rob, <laughs> I'm Rob Coffey. Um, I'm, I, uh, been knowing Alex for quite a while. Um, and, um, you know, I grew up in the church and, you know, been in like a lot of creative ex explorations, I guess you'd call it. And well, this photography and all this other kind of stuff. But music um, is just another extension of that. And when you're dealing with music, you're dealing with sound. So I play um, keys as well as um, um, keys. Yeah, I don't play anything else, uh, but it's, it all has to do with sound. And so... Uh, that gets me into, you know, how do we get a better sound then? And whether it's dealing with the music, whether it's dealing with vocals, how do we produce a better sound? And how do I get the sound as close to professional, <laughs> as close to professional level as um, we can? And so that just keeps making you go down these, these different avenues and mics end up being one of them. And so we, um, just get into the microphones. And so when Alex talked, I was like, yeah, man, we, we can talk about microphones because it's all about, you know, uh, creating a certain level of excellence. And so we want to do that. And, um, if you're going to do that, you got to do your homework. So mm -hmm. yeah. Got here. DeAndre, um, what's your story, my brother? Yes, sir. Um, hello everyone. Uh, my name is DeAndre Bell. Um, I attend the Emmanuel Church um, of our Lord Jesus Christ, uh, located in Columbia, South Carolina, um, where I uh, was formerly the um, sound tech at the church. Um, I did that for a couple of years, um, <laughs> which, um, and I, I'm going to say this too, I, I went to Midlands Tech for the, um, I should have worn the shirt, because Alex brings it up all the time when he's talking to me. <laughs> <laughs> how um, I went to Midlands Tech to learn how to do sound um, and everything. So um, I'm very familiar with, um, you know, how sound works, microphones and trying to make the people sound good in-house and also on the live stream as well. Um, you know, my, my big brother, Alex, he, he definitely um, has taught me a lot. So, um, you know, I give a lot of credit to him for what I know, um, you know, and everything, but uh, that's kind of my story. Uh, it's kind of the, the thing that I do uh, when it comes to making sound 
uh, work and uh, be an amazing situation for everybody that's involved. So, mm-hmm. thank you. I mean, um, I I have you know like 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 Rob and like DeAndre, you know, you grew up in the church, and you be like, well, I want to touch that, you know. And a lot of times, those old deacons would be like, oh no 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 don't don't come over here and touch it. You you moving knobs and all that other kind of stuff. But uh, I'm grateful for um, uh, the chance to be able to do it. Um, like. I remember back in the day, I'm, I'm reminiscing now, how uh, we started off, we had a PA head in Johnston, and I, I got a 16-channel mixer one time, and I went to the music store, it was for one convocation, and I said, I want to I wanna try to get everything. So I went to the music store, and I rented a 16-channel mixer board. And I rented a bunch of microphones. They were cheap mics. They wasn't like they was handheld mics. And I mic everything with them. So I mic the I mic the drum set with them. I mic I mic everything. And I shouldn't have put the mics on there. I I just shouldn't have. Um, <laughs> I mic everything. And um, uh, and we went through the convocation. And after the convocation, I was getting ready to pack everything back up. And Bishop Cooks walked up to me. He said, "Son, he said, what you doing, son?" I said, "Well, Bishop." I'm packing this stuff up because uh, I got to take it back to the music store. And he was like, well, tell the man that we want to keep it. I say, <laughs> what? Okay. All right. Um, but these ain't the right mics. And he said, get the mics that you need. And I was like, he says, go see Dick and John and get a, get whatever you need. I said, okay. All right. Okay. You gave me the okay. Yeah. Bishop said we need X, Y, and Z. Like <laughs> everybody knows how that budget goes, you know. So, yes, uh, but I was fortunate enough, you know, to go in and buy a proper, um, uh, um, a proper drum mic set, uh, to buy the proper condensers that I needed, and you know, it comes from all doing your homework uh, to make sure you got the right in the mic and in, in the right place. So, um. Uh, DeAndre, what is your favorite microphone? I know you have a favorite that you. Oh, love absolutely, to absolutely. My favorite. Um, I love the uh, Shure brand um, of microphones. That that they're my go-to when it comes to microphones, um, especially vocal um, vocal uh, microphones. You know, I love them for for instruments too, uh, but when it comes to the vocals, I love those Shures, man. Awesome. Um and Rob, do you have a favorite mic? I'm gonna say like that. Absolutely, <laughs> it's it's the Sure brand. Um, but in particular, the SM57. King, it's, it's like you so, yes. put a 57 on anything. You can put yeah. a 57 on anything, and I got it on the organ. <laughs> <laughs> and I and I got the uh, I think the Beta 58, not uh, the Beta 50, 58, the Fat Boy, bass yeah. mic on the bottom. Wow. Um, yeah. And so that one is we have that SM50. We got an SM57 for, you know, the um, the old school. We, we we still have old school. By the way, I didn't say my church. I'm at Church of Our Lord Jesus Christ also um, and Savior Jesus Christ. Um, G Street. Um, G but Street. we got a we got a SM57 on Oregon. We got an SM57. Uh, it's like I said, since it was an old school church, we know our, our um, bishop has a reader. So the reader has the SM57 as well. Um, wow. Those are my favorites. And then we have actually corded mics, which I'm looking to change out at some point. But all of them are SM58s. <laughs> and so we, yeah, they just they just work. You can throw them through a window and you know, <laughs> pull them back in. And exactly, it's, it's work. <laughs> that happens. Trust me, that, that happens. Uh, my brand, uh, of course, I got. I got kind of two brands, well, three that I kind of like. Um, uh, of course, I'm using the AKG right now. So I'm using my old Steady, the AKG. You can probably see the AKG boxes in the back right about there in my background. So um, I use these as my studio con- condenser mics. And whenever, you know, I'm on live or anything like that. Um, I've grown to be a fan of Audix. Um, I love a good Audix mic. Um, their drum mics are, yeah, are, whew, 
Yeah. They clean, clear, and they punch. Um, yeah. But um, I love them because of the clarity. Um, my favorite vocal mic, though, is the Shure. It is the Shure uh, SM86. Um, 86. 86. 86. <laughs> um, and I... It just gives me the warmth mm-hmm. in the in the bottom that I need out of a voice. Um, I actually got the um, uh, I got the wireless. I got a Beta um, eighty six wireless, and it's just oh, Beta <laughs> takes it up to another level. So yeah, um, yeah. you got the SMs. Then I mean, you got the PGs. What the PGAs? Yeah. Yeah, before. yeah, you got the betas, and the betas are just, ooh. yeah, betas are lovely. So, um, but um, the purpose, um, we're gonna get right into the purpose. So we got four P's uh, that we're gonna talk about tonight. Um, one of the P's, I'm sorry, y'all. Uh, <laughs> I talk talk about these mics. Y'all know how it is. <laughs> so, uh, all right. So, purpose. Uh, what is the um. Oh, why is the purpose important? So, why is it um, important to match up the right mic to the right um, in the right placement? Rob, I'll let you go ahead and start. Um, absolutely. So, um, I think the first thing uh, when you're starting to talk about sound reinforcement and bringing mics into the picture um, is you have to figure out what are you trying to do with this microphone. Are you trying to capture the ambient sound in the room? Are you trying to capture the vocal? Are you trying to capture um, uh, a, a really narrow field um, of, uh, of sound? And so, because all of those questions and many more questions is going to dictate the type of mic that you purchase. Um, are you going to microphone, are you going to mic an amp, uh, a guitar amp? Um, Okay, if you're on a mic guitar amp, which what size microphone do you need? Do you just need a just a dynamic mic, just point it right in the middle, or are you trying to get a bigger sound? Um, these are two twelves. Uh, so, do you have a a, a um, uh, if you're going a ribbon, or you, you got something a big enough diaphragm to cover to make sure you get a big quality sound? All of that um, helps you get the sound that you're looking to create, right? So if you want, um, for me, if I want to sound like, let's say, I'm just going to call a name, Jimi Hendrix, right? Mm-hmm. Well, I need to kind of figure out what amp he's playing, what guitar he's playing, how they mic the guitar, because it, of course there's post-production on the recording, but I need to start with a good foundation and a good foundation is a good microphone and a good amplifier and start there and that that'll give you something to build on. If you start, I'm just gonna grab a microphone that we got in the closet back there. We ain't use. I'm gonna dust it off. We used to use it for the choir. It used to hang down the, from the ceiling. We just gonna throw that in front, <laughs> and we just gonna use that. Well, you're gonna pick up no. the piano. You're gonna pick up the guitar. You're gonna pick up the bass. You're gonna get all of this stuff <laughs> and trying to figure out why it don't work because you haven't really paid attention to the purpose of that microphone, which was to hang down from a ceiling and get ambient sound. Mm-hmm. So. The purpose to me is really you have to number that's like almost like the number one what are you trying to do um and and that'll help uh you make the decision on uh, which microphone to choose i mean and that's right you know you got to make sure that you choose the the right mic for the right <laughs> situation like you like you say you don't want to grab that that choir stand mic that little <laughs> It stick it in front of a good tie up. That ain't that ain't gonna work. Uh, uh, Andre, um, uh, give us something about purpose. Yeah, so uh, just to kind of pick it back off of uh, what Rob was saying was, you know, figuring out, you know, um, you know, if, if you're going to be using it, you know, all of us at church, you know, um, you know, everyone doesn't have the same instruments, the type of instruments. Um, So that's important um, to know, Um, you know, especially if you got drums, right? You know, um, some drums are out and open, you know, and then there's some covered drums, right? So, um, you know, understanding 
uh, the position that you're in and figuring out what exactly would be best useful for what you have. Um, you know, I, I've realized I, I worked with the uh, guy. You probably know him, um, Alex Frank, um, who does the sound, um, you know, at, at the meeting place, whatever. I worked with him. Um, he's come out and, 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 and did some work um, at our church before. And um, there's different times where, you know, you could be in a church, then you can be outside. And then you can be in a cafeteria at a school and they have those little barriers on the walls that kind of capture, make sure that sound doesn't go all over the place. So understanding, you know, like I said, the the situation that you're in and, and, you know, that's one of the things too, like if you're going to be going to a different place outside of your norm, I would advise anybody to go and, and look at, you know, what they have or what the, what's going on there. Um, because, you know, you don't want to just be like, oh, I'm going to take this SM58, 57 or beta or whatever and just mic up everything. And then, you know, next thing you know, your whole sound is, is off because you're using one mic for everything. So um, understanding that the purpose of what it is that you're going to be using it for, where you're going to be at, because different places have different sounds. So um, that that's why I would say the purpose of using the right mic Um but it's key, especially if you're going to be recording as well. That's a totally different sound when you have recording versus a live service. So um, it's, it's, it's super important to understand what you're doing and, and the purpose of, of uh, what you're micing up at whatever location. You know, and that's one important thing that um, uh, uh, that you just said is the difference between um, recording and mm -hmm. a difference between live. Um, mm -hmm. I went back today and I was – I, and I listen to live streams because I, I want to hear how the service was in house and then how it was on live as well. And I want me personally, I want my um, uh, I want my music to translate for how it is in house. And I want close to that same feeling online, uh, you know, and I feel with me that yeah, that comes from. Uh, having detail mics and you know in detail spots uh giving me very details of what I would hear in the house um you know um one of the things that um um I went to um a, a course a couple of years ago and they were talking about um doing um uh best levels in the church um mm -hmm. how do you know that your music is, a, is, I mean, that your mics are at a good level. How do you know that musicians are at a good level? And everybody had their own take, you know. Um, everybody was looking at DB meters and like, well, do I need to be at 80 or do I need to be at 90? <laughs> or, 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 you know, do I need to be at 112? No, you're not at a rock concert. So, uh, <laughs> yeah, I know, right? Um, but uh, one of the things that the teacher said is, he made a very great statement when he said, look at your people. If your people was engaged and if your people are singing along with the, whoever's up and whoever's singing, then your sound is at a good level. Mm -hmm. If your people are not engaged and they're giving you that look like, oh, it's too harsh, it's too loud, then you need to take it down some. If you are looking at the people and um, the people act like they just can't hear, then yeah, you need to take it up some. So um, first of all, that's the first thing that um, I will request anybody to do is to try to find that sweet spot with your congregation. Um, mm -hmm. To make sure that, you know, because um, yes, putting the right mic on them is important, but you got to make sure that they can hear it and you want to make sure that they're engaged too. Um, so um, that's my little tidbit. Uh, <laughs> All right, um, so we're gonna move to the next section. Next section, you know, the next P. Um, Rob, I know you have a passion for this P, um, and it is talking about uh patterns, microphone patterns. Um, yeah, I'll let you go ahead and take it, Rob. Well, I, I won't, I won't, um, I won't tear it here. I won't, <laughs> but, I, but, uh, I mean. I, we, we we touched on it briefly in the last um, comment when I was mentioning the uh, 
the uh, choir microphone, um, each microphone has a particular pattern. And whether there are different names for them, you got figure eight, you have cardioid, you have hypercardioid. I mean, it's, and all of them have a different purpose. Um, and if you're trying to figure out what pattern you need, you need to figure out what you're going to use that microphone for. Uh, once you figure that out, uh, then you can start looking at, okay, all right, I, I need a microphone that I just need to get the front of this right here. I just need that, right? I don't need the back behind the microphone. I just need this. So there are some microphones pattern is a figure eight, which means that the diaphragm goes like this, like this is the middle of it. And it goes, so it picks up is great for an interview. Let's say if we're doing a podcast and I'm sitting across from someone um, and we just need to record it. Um, that's a great microphone for that. Um, what wouldn't be a great microphone for that is a hypercardioid, which is going to just really take mm -hmm. almost like goes like this and it picks up on one side. It's just a narrow cardioid, basically like a heart shape. But the other person on the other side won't get it. And so that is what the patterns are. And in some microphones, actually this one here that I, I purchased and use it, it's a USB microphone. Um, you can actually change the patterns in this microphone. Um, it has two uh, diaphragms on each side, so you can turn off one, flip it on, turn it on. So it's it's pretty cool. Um, but it but again, uh, like for instances like this, um, <laughs> I just need this side of the microphone picking up. I don't need this side of the microphone picking up. Um, what other patterns? You know, you have patterns that um, just pick up everything. Just it just it just picks up everything around it. And that's kind of um, you see some of those mics. If you're, we have one actually at our church, and I low key hate it. And it really, <laughs> only reason I hate it is because of the placement, um, and that's what makes it like not that great. Because we have high ceilings at our um, church, and it's up at the top, and it just kind of mm -hmm. comes down. But the thing we talk about frequencies, the bass frequencies are so big, like they're huge, right? As opposed to like uh, narrower frequencies of uh, like trebles and um, higher, higher pitched um, instruments and voices and what have you. So those big bass frequencies hit that dog on microphone and it just sounds like, eh, you know, there's no, mm -hmm. like my daughter, my daughter's 12 years old. She likes to use this word distinction. There's no distinction. <laughs> and so anyway, <laughs> Caitlin, I love you if you ever see this, but um, <laughs> but that, that microphone is, is just, it just doesn't, it just doesn't, what young people say, it doesn't give, right? It's just not giving. And so I, I usually don't even use it. Um, what would be a better use, I think, of getting ambient sound is you see some recordings now that they'll use a microphone I'm like and I, I look at like churches like Bethel Hill song and you listen to their recordings and you want that live kind of feel if you're going for that they have microphones placed right toward the audience mm -hmm. so when, you, when you watch in a certain church with a guy in Charlotte you know, around the Charlotte area and you be and he'll say something like you know and not as God is not only good, but God is goodness. And they'd be like, mm, yes, mm. and you hear that really good. <laughs> you hear that really well because they have microphones like pointing toward the audience. And so that's the kind of feel that you you can take that and blend it in into the um, everything else that's mic correctly. And it, it just gives you that feel that you're talking about, Alex, that feel that they're right there with you. But that's all has to do with like making sure that that microphone has the right pattern that's pointing to those people. So it all, it all plays together. Um, going just, you know, making a purpose, um, making, making what you have in your mind, being able to produce that. And it, it, it takes that kind of thought to get there. Mm -hmm. And, and, you know, you hit it when you said um, taking it from a thought, and then you have to um, um, kind of put it to action or put it in detail. Um, I know uh, when you talked about that crowd, Mike, I have in Johnson, I have, um, um, I had two pencil condensers at one time and I used to set them on the, um, 
I set them in the front, uh, right in front of the pulpit and point them straight out. Um, and it works great when elders up and the elders preaching and he's preaching hard and people are engaging and you can hear people say, amen. It, it sounds like he's not just preaching to em- empty pews. Um, and, you know, it sounds like there's people actually in the building. Um, and you know, I just, I, I put it at a taste. I mean, I use it for Bible class nights. Um, so when he's teaching in Bible class and people are engaged and people are in it, you know, you know, you can hear them in the background say, amen. And, you know, so forth, you know, because having that little feel, you know, it, you know, because the cameras, we only zoom the cameras in to a, a certain box. And because we got the camera in a certain box, we need to hear, you know, like people say, I, I want to feel like I'm in church. Mm-hmm. Well, the only way for you to feel like you're in church is if I give you that little bit of off and I'll give you that little bit of experience. So then now now you can really feel like you're in church, you know, because they are because some of them, some of them are sick and can't come to church. So, you know, they want to feel like I I want to be there. I want to I want to still have that feeling. And then, of course, you got those that's just I don't even feel like going to church today. <laughs> and then you got the nosy folks. So, yeah. Nosy uh, folks. But, uh, you know, patterns are so important. Like um, like you said, the figure eight. I know the microphone that I'm using. Uh, you can see it has the grill on the back, mm-hmm. has a grill in the front. Um, the microphone sits kind of right there in the middle, so you can pick up from this end or pick up from that end. Um, so the figure is eight is great. Um, uh, shotgun is great when you're out, you know, when you're outside and you're just trying to catch straight forward and straight hit. Shotgun is great. Um, uh, like I say, there's different figures, there's different patterns for. For all microphones, and that's one thing that you have to understand. Um, uh, if you got any questions, if any of you guys got any questions, please just go ahead and throw them in the comment section. Um, I can see the comments, and and the guests can see the comments as well. Um, next, we're gonna go about placement. Um, placement, 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 placement is everything. Um, and one of the things that we have to understand while we're in placement is um, you will see a lot of times Mike say dynamic and you will also see them say condenser. So, DeAndre, I'm going to let you tackle this. Uh, what is the difference in between a dynamic microphone and a condenser microphone? All right. So um, I could have went very, very technical in my explanation of um, the dynamic and condenser microphones, but because of our audience, um, I'm going to keep it as simple as possible. <laughs> so um, a dynamic uh, microphone uh, that's used more so, if you will, you use it for like uh, the louder sounds. Um, so more so like, you know, if you're, um, you know, doing like a live um, instruments, um, different things like that, if you're live. Um, it's it's more to pick up and capture, you know, what, what's going on in a live situation. Um, doesn't mean that you can't use a condenser in those situations, but the better microphone um, or the better use would be the dynamic uh, microphone. Um, the condenser microphone, that's more so, you know, uh, in, in cases like this, as you can see, I don't have a mic. Right. So I'm using um, a non microphoned uh, situation. So uh, with with Alex and Rob, they would be using more of a like a, a for like a, a studio or a podcast, different things. Then that would be more so for like the condenser situation, uh, kind of getting those those quieter, uh, lower, um, you know, frequencies um, also um, is better for like the higher like the higher frequencies as well. So it kind of picks up those. So if you want that kind of cleaner, crisp, you know, how Alex and and and, and Rob sound, they sound so amazing. Oh my you God. know, it's because, you know, <laughs> because they're, they understand the difference between the dynamic and the condenser and they're uh, more so have the, the condenser situation there. That's the easy 
quick way I can explain the condenser and my um and dynamic. I can go in terms of of how the microphone is set up, the all of that, the electrical intricacies. I, I don't want to do that because I don't want to scare nobody. I don't want to make nobody like, what is he talking about? So that's yeah. the quick movie. If you're looking for more of a studio, you know, sound and everything mm-hmm. or or podcast, like I said, that's more condenser. If, if it's like a live, um, then that's more the dynamic type um, of microphones that you want to use. So I'm going to leave it at that to make sure that no one else gets confused any further. <laughs> Well, 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 we got some questions that's coming in. Uh, yes, sir. So, uh, one of the questions that's coming in, um, uh, Jonathan asks, is, um, <laughs> uh, does dynamic mean we going to have good church? Basically. <laughs> that, that is a great question. <laughs> yeah. uh, yes, it means that we're going to have a great church. Now, <laughs> now yeah. um, but no, that's that's the excellent question. Now, um, I know he's you know being funny with it, but um, for you know those live services when you when you you know those Sunday mornings and you want to come into church and you want to have a good time, the dynamic can be very very useful. You know for those for those type of services. So, so yeah, it, you can use it for a real good time in church. And 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 dynamics are used especially for people like like I say, it's for a louder sound. So mm-hmm. if you have somebody who is really extremely um, loud in the microphone, like when they yeah. um, like when they sing and they do a lot of yelling and do a lot of screaming, uh, yeah. condenser is probably going to be the best route to go for them. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, and that brings me up to uh, Brittany's question. Uh, Brittany says, um, are there specific mics to use uh, in small settings uh, mm-hmm. uh, than large settings? Rob, I'll let you take a, 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 a snag at that one. Uh, I don't, I don't, mm, honestly, I, I can't say specific mics to use in small settings rather than large settings. I would, I would say, um, so let's say there is a smaller church and, yeah, uh, yeah. you know, I can't and say you that. don't want to put too much in one area so yeah how would you tailor that to make sure that you know yeah you get what you need to but it's not an overkill yeah so one of the things i I look at um first of all your budget because there's something there's something in the budget that you know there's enough microphones out there that can fit your budget i would also with a caveat to that was I would stay on the um the, the brands that we talked about. Um I would personally uh un- you, you do what you gotta do, number one, right? So you know, you got different types of microphones. You we've been talking about Shure, Sennheiser, AKG, um, but um Audix. But there there are brands out there that they run what? off Bluetooth. Um and that can get you uh, okay in a snag, but you really want to at least make some investments in like the brands that we've been talking about. There's some other brands, but these are very reputable, established brands, um, and they they have um, everything for a budget. Now, I would say as far as the type of microphone, you can use a condenser, you can use... Uh, a, a rusty trusty, like I said, the SM57 is a straight up dynamic mic. It's it's it runs about $89, 99 dollars, um, and it it's a workhorse. You can scream in it, like I said. You can you can elbow it when you get mad, um, get mad at the devil, and just like <laughs> and hit it, and it's going to bounce back. Now, if you have a if you spent four, five, seven hundred dollars on a condenser mic, um, it's very sensitive. That diaphragm is very, is very, is delicate, a lot more delicate than um than a dynamic would take. Like uh, DeAndre was explaining, so you take a little more care of that microphone. You I don't do. want people hollering <laughs> in that microphone. I say, somebody say that oh, it's good. The thought is good. It's like you looking at that microphone, like bro. <laughs> yeah, please back off that microphone. <laughs> but you, but and so it's it's kind of one of those things where um. 
we have we have a we have a condenser microphone in our pulpit and um and it it, it picks up well yeah. <laughs> it picks up very well and you know it's about this small but it's 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 a sure i'm not sure what kind it is um but man, when people, when them pressures start increasing, and I'm not gonna go into pressures, but when those <laughs> them sound pressures start increasing, yeah, because like you can, I mean, it has a little thing on it, but um, foam on it, but it'll start like boom, you can start here. I'm like, bro, come yeah. yeah. on. But um, yeah. it's just kind of one of those things. Got to know your audience, like like they uh like DeAndre said. Um, but I would say personally, if I had to do a recommendation, sure. They're very easily accessible. You know, if you want wired uh, SM57, SM58, that's just your standard clean. Like I said, that's what we use. We've used them for a while. If you want to go wireless, they have the wireless series. We have, <laughs> I'm going to tell you how we got the third one, but we we have two wireless um, Shures. I forgot which ones those are, but they're like the, they're just standard. One of them got a pin in it because it, it I'm been dropped and it just still, it still works. So those work just fine. Um, I don't think there's one that we specifically, you'd use one versus another based on the size. It's hard for me to, it's hard for me to say it's based on the size. It, it, I would say pick a mic based on other factors rather than the small setting size. Yeah. And, 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 and I think that that's important. Um, one thing that I would say uh, when coming to placement in small areas, yeah. um, if you use a hot mic, and when I mean a hot mic, it's a mic that don't it's need a, but a little bit of volume and it's loud. Yeah. If you use a hot mic, um, please consider the fact that if I'm standing here and I'm singing, if I got somebody standing next to me, yeah. that mic can't be, and I, I'm gonna use, I'm gonna use this mic for an example. That mm -hmm. mic can't be about this far out, yeah, because that mic has to be up to as to your mouth, and the reason why, <laughs> because if that other person's mic is that far away as well you're going to get nothing but a ton of feedback. Yeah. yeah. Cuz nobody has that mic up in their mouth if you're that close together. So yeah. make sure um that's just a good um placement tip. Um uh, make sure that you got that mic up in your mouth. If somebody's singing right next to you, make sure they got that mic up near their mouth as well. And then that way both of you guys are not causing feedback issues where um that mic pattern is picking up in the other mic pattern yeah. and up in the other mic pattern and then you don't know who might screaming exactly yeah that's the worst because we're sitting there trying to find out whose mic is screaming and we don't know because yeah everybody got their mic all the way out and they're all hot mics so um make sure that um if you're singing in that mic that you got it close up on you and that you're singing yeah. um i would you know just the Add to that, Alex, and you bring up a really great point, which um, in a smaller setting, it, it, in, I'm, I'm going to say a smaller setting, and you're not trying to, because, you know, in some recordings, you want to get that feel of the room, and sometimes you mic drums with the mic way out here, because you want the feel of the room, because it's been treated well. Um, but if you're not trying to pick up so much, like you were mentioning, um, Look at pay attention to the pattern. I would say something with a cardioid, hypercardioid microphone pattern that'll help um, isolate the sound that's going into that mm -hmm. instead of um, instead of uh, picking up other things around it. So you know that may be one thing to pay attention to if you're specifically looking at recording or or capturing and and uh, reinforcing that vocal sound. Look for something that's going to give you a narrow, very narrow cone where you can sing into instead of pick up so much stuff around, if that's the purpose. Yeah. And, and tailor the mic to the person. Mm -hmm. Like, I, 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 can't, I can't say that enough. If the person screams, get them a dynamic mic. If the person yeah. real soft, really detailed in how they sing, mm -hmm. you might want to get them a condenser mm -hmm. because that's where they're really going to shine. Um, yeah. 
um, because the condenser is just going to be so much cleaner. Yeah. Uh, Jonathan, I see your question, and it's actually going to be in our next um, in our next beat. Uh, but um, we got one more to hit with this one. Uh, well, we got three more to talk about in this in this uh, next one is going to be uh, we were talking about. Uh, the difference in between a dynamic and a condenser. Uh, so now we're going to talk about phantom power. What is phantom power? Um, there are some microphones that we use on uh, that require extra power in order to work. So um, uh, there would be a V48 button somewhere on your mixer. Uh, and that V48 or that 48V is going to be your friend. So what it's going to allow you to do, it's going to allow you to hit that button and it boosts and it gives you um, an extra bit of energy or power to be able to run your microphone. So like take the microphone that I have right here, it's going to require a little bit more power in order um, to get a sound out of it. So uh, this microphone is a, um, it is a, um, a phantom power microphone and typically when you buy the mic um or when you're researching it on online it will tell you phantom power is required 48 volts is re re required so that way you can know that hey okay i gotta add power to it but well, mm -hmm. what happens if you don't add power to it you ain't gonna hear nothing, you, hear nothing. Uh, <laughs> uh, you have to hit that button and uh you know so um, make sure that you um, bring down your game, you bring down your fader, um, hit that button and cut it on, and then go ahead and gradually move everything up. Because yeah. if not, if you got everything up and you just hit that button, it's going to start screaming all over the place as soon as you do it. Um, so um, Phantom, Phantom, Phantom Power is nice. It is clean. Um, there are some... Um, Direct boxes that we use uh, for like keyboards and guitars and bass and stuff like that, that they require um, phantom power as well, either a nine volt battery or either phantom power to, to power as well to, to be able to capture and to get a good, good sound. Uh, so um, if you got phantom power on your board, which most of the boards have phantom power on the board, use the phantom power. Um, um, especially if you know that you're going to be plugging in something. It's going to be able to have it. Um, uh, while I'm on that tip, um, make sure that you invest in um, one of these guys. <laughs> the direct box? They know what this is. This is a, a cable tester. So that oh. way you can pop your cables in. Oh, okay. And you can test to make sure that your cables are actually good. Because that's, that's good. Good. Yeah. You have a lot of times too. You go hook it up with a cable, and the cable's bad. And then you're like, "Well, why you get the sign out of it? I don't test this. I don't test that." Uh, just spend the forty bucks, get your cable tester, keep it at the church, um, keep it in the, at at the sound room, or and then that way you can move it around and so forth. Um, yeah. And, and I, can I add to that too? Yeah. Yeah. That that cable tester um, definitely saves. Um, a lot of time. Um, I know one of the, the, the things when I first uh, took over um, as a sound tech at the church, um, we had a thousand cables. And uh, what I ran into quickly, which I didn't know too much about at the time, was I'm like, okay, well, this cable looks good. Let me plug it on in. Yeah. And this is when we were using a lot of uh, um, corded mics. And I'm, and I'm plugging it in and what's going on? Why is not working? The cable looks good, but it was an old cable that we had from the old church that they brought over. So um, that cable tester definitely um, mm -hmm. help you out. Just because the cable looks good doesn't mean that it's good. You know, sure. so, um, it, you know, one of the things that I learned over time was, um, and this is just to kind of help anybody out with that too. If you can, if you're doing this, you know, at your church or if you want to do this professionally, you know, as often as you can, try to get out to your church or wherever um, days before, a day before, hours before, so you can test everything out. Um, because if something is wrong, you can figure it out a day before, hours before, 
and use another cable because you can use a cable one day and it's good. And then the next thing you know, something could happen in the process of using it in the process of transition and, and it goes out. So, um, you know, preparing yourself and not just coming up there right on time, you know, would, would save you headache and would save embarrassment too. Cause I've, I've definitely run into those cases of embarrassment <laughs> where I thought a cape was good in the middle of service and boom, it's not. And then, I'm looking around like, what's going on? So um, that's what I would say to add to that. Go ahead. <laughs> uh, uh, one of the things that, um, and and we're going to slide into um, uh, um, uh, placement tips, um, but one of the things that uh, DeAndre said is check your equipment. Check it ahead of time. Make sure it works before the service actually starts. So that way you can make sure that everything is actually good. Um, you know, and that way you know if it's the cable or if it's the microphone. Mm-hmm. In some cases, it could be the microphone. Um, yeah. But um, placement tips. Um, anybody got any good placement tips, ideas? I'm all about uh, taking placement tips when it comes to Leslie. So, Rob, if you got any magical ones about Leslie's, I mean, Leslie's, please let me know. You can let well with the last you can you can you can mic that thing so many daggum ways. Um, I one one of the th- well, as far as placement, um, there's so many. There's the X Y placement. You you've seen these guys where it, like there's there's some things um, I, I'm not gonna go into like phase, but you want to um, decrease phase, um, which actually. I'm not gonna go into it <laughs> because, <laughs> because it's, 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 it's the idea is that you don't want to cancel out frequency. Yeah, you don't want to cancel out frequency. So there's ways you can mic Leslie's. You can mic drums the same way overheads. You've seen them this way, or you can mic them on the ends like that, and mic them down. Um, but placement is usually um, the closer the better. Typically, um, the closer the better, um, where you have a lot of that sound hitting that microphone, um, so you can get the full um, the full sound as much as you can. Um, and then again, again, it's based on the microphone, but placement is everything. You want to. The idea is to get the sound that you want and keep out the sound that you don't want, mm-hmm. um, because the sound that you don't want it's a it's a word for that. It's called noise. You want you want more signal, less noise. Now that'll preach. Y'all ready? To turn to the fifth chapter book. No, but uh, <laughs> but you want you want you want more signal and less noise. And so that's that's all that you're striving for, really. When you're <laughs> when you talk about microphones, get me the best sound I, I can get. Um, sometimes it you know, and sometimes it's the microphone. Like you want a microphone that actually, when you start getting into it, you're like. What's the character of this microphone? You know what I mean? Like, is it like Alex talked about it earlier? He's like, is it warm? It has a warm sound. I like this. I like this sound because it's warm or it's punchy. But this microphone has this. But a lot of it sometimes has to do with placement. Um, mic and drums. That's placement city. Yes. <laughs> yes. yes. I, Dre, you want to elaborate on that? <laughs> you so, see this uh, from the head. <laughs> So I, I'll say this with drums. That that is um if you can figure out the drums, I think you can pretty much figure out every anything. So um the drums when I was younger, and I'm pretty sure people have seen this before. Uh, when I was younger, I always when I was like, why is there a microphone like in the bass? Like they would cut a hole, you know, in the base of the drum and like put a microphone in there. I'm like, why would you cut it? And put it in there, and you don't have all this good. But it's like you were saying earlier, you know, the closer the better. They, you know, you can put it on the outside, but when you have it on the inside, it gives you that 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 sound of the bass drum, you know. So, um, making sure on top of that, having the right microphone for that too. Absolutely. Like you were saying for the cymbals, you can have them crossed, or you can have them, you know, out. I'm trying to figure out where my fingers are. There it is. Where you know you can have them out like this too. Um, you know, because you don't want to, and then having it higher versus mm-hmm. lower mm-hmm. to the, to the, to the symbols that plays a significant, um, part too. So, yeah. um, placement 
it it is extremely key. Um, but it also you know, the things that we talked about prior to the pattern and the purpose, it all plays a part, um, even when singing. Right. So you can have a, a you know, one of the standard one of our favorite microphones, SM58. Right. So you can have that. And personally, you can have it singing here. But then one of the things I dislike is when you have that same microphone on a stand and you got four people around that one mic. Yeah. Like that's like that. That's not really the 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 purpose <laughs> for that mic. You know, you want to have it specifically to one person. Um, that way, you can get the the you know the best out of that microphone. Um, that's why if you have a choir, or if you're on a choir stand, you have those hanging mics. Mm-hmm. You know, because it picks up the entire choir stand, and it's used specifically for that. Um, versus putting three microphones on a, you know, 58s on stands and placing it in front of each section. Could it work? Yeah, but, you know, it's, it, it, you're not going to get the full, you know, um, results that you're looking for. So having the right placement um, and, and the right microphone plays an extremely important key um, to everything that you're doing. Um, so that, that's, that's what I have to say. I, I want to say, um, hello, Brittany. Good to see you. Oh, man, that was a great question that you asked earlier. Go ahead. <laughs> oh, Alex, I think you, uh, you muted. My bad. I'm sorry. Uh, uh, Brittany asked a question, and, uh, and Sister Bill asked a question as well. So we're going to tackle both of those questions. Um, but there's one thing I want to dive into real, real quick. Um, that one thing being uh, when it comes to uh, micing the choir, it is very important uh, when you do go to mic a choir that you consider what else you got that's going on in the background. Um, so I know in Johnston, I have a treatment problem. Uh, what I mean treatment is I got a bunch of sheetrock and that sound hits that sheetrock and it bounces all over the place. Now I know on uh, on my tenors, I have a large diaphragm condenser because they sing soft and I really need to catch them. So, um, but I do realize that, hey, I might need to put a gate on it because of the simple fact that it's hard because my drums mm-hmm. are super loud. Yeah. Uh, and even in my pencil condensers, it does a good job of trying to narrow it out a little bit better for me, but the drums are just so overpowering. So oh, yeah. uh, now I'm falling into what we call the treatment issue. And it's like, how do we treat the room? Uh, what do we do to make sure that um, it is taken care of and and it dampens the sound and absorbs a lot of the sound so those sounds won't actually pick up into the microphones. Um, so uh, that's one thing. Uh, other placement tips I got. Thing in the mic like this. Don't hold it all the way down to your stomach and try to sing. Uh, that's one thing that we hate is sound techs and, you know, um, don't be beating the microphone to see if it's on. <laughs> we have headphones in, and then you're damaging the diaphragm in the phone. I mean, in the um, in the microphone, you're damaging our speakers. Don't, yeah. don't, don't. I mean, there's a simple way to do it. You can say you can pick up the microphone, and you can say, you know, Hallelujah, praise the Lord, praise the Lord, Hallelujah. Praise the Lord, praise the Lord. Just the test so you can be able to hear yourself. Um, um, so those are just, you know, my little tidbits of placement um, uh, that I got. Um, Brittany asked a question in the middle of placement. She put, um, how does placement ballot sound uh, for the in-person and the virtual experience? Oh, you, you go ahead. You go ahead. Oh, okay. <laughs> so, um, like like we said earlier, um, the the in house versus the live, um, you realize very quickly that it's two different 
Um, sounds right. So um, in house, uh, one of the things I realized was <clears throat> that you can have the house, and what I mean by house is the location that you're at. So uh, you can have the house perfect, right? You can all the mics sound good. You know, the leader is a little higher, or you can hear the leader a little bit better than the background, the music, the instruments, or, you know, balance with the, with the music, all that good stuff. And then you get on the live, and it's all over the place, right? Mm -hmm. uh, so um, the placement, uh, when it comes to holding the microphones, there are microphones where you can, like you know, we were saying earlier, you can, I'm going to use this bottle as a microphone. Um, you can have the mic singing in the mic this way as the mic is up and you can sing here and it, it you know the pattern it, if it's one of those microphones where it picks up everywhere all around then cool but for the most part you want to have the microphone literally directly yep. the voice going in that way it picks it up how it's supposed to um and that would help the live sound as well um not only the in-house um and going to answer the question too, the, the the placement along with the type of microphone that you're using too plays a huge part um, for the live stream. So um, I know one of the things that I would do um, is until I figured out exactly how I wanted it, I had those headphones on the entire service. And um, I mean, I was, I would have one ear off listening to the house. And if once I got the house exactly how I wanted every Sunday, boom, okay, I, I know the house is good. Let me put the headphones in and let me just make sure that the live. So I would, you know, always be tweaking a little bit um, and everything, you know, for the live stream. Um, but the, the, the placement of every instrument, like I said before, with the, with the drums, you know, if you got the cymbals and they're super loud, obviously the cymbals are, you know, extremely loud that even the Bible talks about. Right. So um, if you have the, the, the microphones, you know, let's use this for example. Let's say you have an issue with the, uh, the, the the cymbals and drums, all that stuff, and it's super, super loud. You're trying to do everything you can in the back, and it's just not working like you really want to. Then moving them a little further away to kind of give it more of a ceiling to kind of hit mm -hmm. the microphone would help for the live, right? Um, that's one way you can help um, for the live in terms of placement. That's one simple way. Um, that's one thing that I learned. Um, I know everyone else on here does this too, but working directly with your musicians as well is key, right? So your musicians may like a certain thing and it's okay. You know, they, they play every Sunday or however often, you know, so they, they like it a certain way. So working directly with them and saying, Hey, I know you like, you know, to, to, you know, you, the symbols a certain way, hitting the symbols really, really loud, right? Um, because every every musician is different. But let's see, we can get you to play it really, really loud. But let's hang those those microphones up just a tad bit higher. That way, you know, it can work not only for you, but for us in the house, and also, uh, you know, for the live stream. So that that's kind of something that I would I would you know, utilize in terms of placement, making sure that your musicians are good, making sure that the singers, because every leader, like we said earlier, every leader is not the same. You know, Alexander, the, the tenors, they're, they're not as loud as the sopranos and altos. So, you know, making sure that you get that right microphone for that particular, you know, section, if you're going to be using, you know, certain microphones in that, in that regard and making sure that the placement, okay, let me put the microphone a little bit closer to the tenors. I can have those microphones with the altos and sopranos just a little bit further back because I know they sing loud and they don't need to be that close to the microphone. So uh, doing that helps not only in, and I know I'm talking, I'm sorry. I'm, I'm this. I know it helps in the, the live service, but also, like I said, when you go back and listen to it on the recording, you will yeah. recognize immediately the differences in terms of the placement. Oh, wow. Okay. Having it a little further back from the Sopranos because it's, it's five Sopranos over there. It's two tennis and it's three altos. Okay. I, I need to pull it back a little bit. And now I have that even balanced sound on the live. So I'm going to go ahead and zip it up. Let y'all go ahead and take over. <laughs> oh, 
Oh, Rob, you you had something to say about that one? Oh, that was no, that was good. I, I think he I think he hit the nail on the head. Um, let me let me caveat by saying this too, because um, we're in the process um, of uh, revamping what we do at our church currently. Um, none of I've been running tests and I, I like to test and test and test and test. And um, but we're in the process of revamping all that we do to kind of make things a lot more streamlined, um, have things going through the system. Currently, we do share um, online and it's it's. Uh oh. Did I lose y'all? Mm -hmm. oh, I'm here. You here? OK, I'm sorry if y'all see me. Oh, bear with me. Well, one of the things that I will say that I use and that I do in Johnston uh, while we getting raw back, um, one of the things that I do and that I use in Johnston is I use this. I use this SSD. Um, so what I do is um, the system that I bought in Johnston, um, I bought it for a particular reason because I wanted to be able to bring it back um, uh, home. So uh, what I do is I I use this SSD, I record the service. When I record the service, I can then take it back home, pop it into my mixer here at the house, plug it right up. That's the good thing about a digital mixer. Um, I can pop it right back, back up. I can pull up the channels in the church and I can sit here and listen and tweak it just the way I want to tweak it. Um, then I save it, take it back to the church, and upload those settings. Uh, so that's one of the things that helped me, you know. And and uh, you know, my wife can attest to it. Every time I got in the car when we left, you know, the, the um, <laughs> to come home from church, I'm Listen. playing back to live service just to see to do that car test, you know. Mm -hmm. um, I want to hear the kick. I want to feel the kick. And I want to make sure that I don't have to crank up my radio all the way loud in order to hear it. I want yeah. to make sure that, you know, you set the same good level dial that um, it is for when I'm listening to music in the car and stuff like, like that. You know, because that's the worst when, you know, you're sitting at home and you're getting ready to watch a service. And then all of a sudden you got to jack the TV volume all the way up in order to hear it. So um, and that's one thing uh, that we're going to tackle is leveling uh so that's one thing that we're going to tackle in the near future is too but rob you was go ahead and say it and let you finish yes yeah, oh no uh thank you um the little my camera my phone well my computer just went weird on me but uh one of the things um that i just wanted to say that we're, we're in the process of um going through a renovation with how we do audio and video so um, some of the things that I'm, I'm saying on here, we haven't implemented. Um, well, they're, well, they're being implemented on the back end. Y'all don't see like all of like the raw files that are being created and tweaked and all of that stuff. And um, <clears throat> and so once we once we get all that implemented, it'll be like a, a brand. It'll be a whole it'll be a whole rebranding kind of situation. So uh, but that being said, I, I appreciate Brittany's question. Um, and, and I think DeAndre hit it on the head with the placement, man. It's it's like when you talk about placement, you, you, you're talking about distance. You're talking about separating yourselves and kind of have a distinction between the different sounds so you can hear things better. One of the things I, I would um, recommend as well, when you start talking about in-person versus virtual, um, those are like those are very unique situations like they're so they're separate so one of the things i would recommend is um if if there's an opportunity to have a mixer with um some auxiliaries and you can still do this with um you can do this with your current setup you can do this with your current setup and you can also uh also have whatever you're using to do the live because what's happening is um, when you're using a microphone in a service and it's projecting and using amplifiers and keyboards and all of that sound, well, there's another microphone in play. <laughs> That's the one on your phone. And that is picking up all of that without a, a, a distinction. And so what you could do is I have a device, um, I rig 
it's the um you can if you're using like a, a iphone there's something called an iRig where you can actually put a quarter inch straight from the mixer maybe you got like two auxiliary or two buses that you can call them auxiliaries two maybe two or four buses on this mixer um it doesn't have a super expensive one plug one of those quarter inches out of that bus put it into the iRig mm -hmm. iRig straight into the phone now you can actually control the sound of that microphone that's going that sound that's going into your phone as if like you're like you're mixing it right there so mm -hmm. you can turn down that you could turn it down you could turn it up um and it in that way you can have even more control not only are the control within the service but now you have control of what's going on to that live mix and so that may be another solution where you um if you have like just, just like i said of a small pa where you can send sound out it's usually called like an aux one aux two something like that where you can bust bust that sound out to a place and send that certain let's say i want to just send these this vocal here maybe the tenors here i'm gonna just send a little bit i need a little more in the service in the house what we call and that's what we call in-house sound versus you know sending it outside the house um i maybe need more in the service in-house but i need less on the stream because they're low you know they're just a bit much on the stream so mm -hmm. That's one way you can actually separate it. It's just like a mixer. You could probably get one for like 150, right, guys? Maybe 150, 200 bucks. Yeah, a Yamaha, something, something like that. And you can actually probably control a little bit of the EQ, you know, maybe, mm -hmm. little, you know, and just send the sound out. Now you're able to control what actually comes if you're doing a live on your phone. Um, so that may be that may be another opportunity where you can get a really good sound with um with, with more control, I would say, on top of placement. And and you know, is um so Brittany, I hope you got you got a lot. So uh <laughs> yeah, you got a lot. This, this, this time you got a really a whole 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 lot. Um <laughs> and uh taking notes. Yeah, 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 taking notes. Yeah. Taking notes. Up, uh, I got we got you. We got you. <laughs> yeah, this is also available for playback. Uh, right. So, uh, next thing we got, um, let's go to our next uh, topic. Next topic is going to be talking about frequencies. Um, and we took frequencies and we spelled it with a P. Right, Rob? That's right. <laughs> right. <laughs> P is now. Uh, so, uh, frequencies. So, First of all, uh, frequencies are typically for wireless mics. Um, so frequencies are typically for wireless mics. Um, we need to understand what the government allows. Because after 9-11, uh, the government came in and said that we need to free up uh, some channels so we can use some for first responders. Um, because they found out in New York um, that they had a problem trying to communicate with each other. So... Um, DeAndre, uh, frequencies. We're talking about wireless mics now. Um, and Bill, we're going to get to your question in this section because it has to do with, um, with you know, my, with preacher mics and wireless mics and so forth. So, DeAndre, what does the government allow us to do? So, like you were saying, um, with the 9 11 situation, um, it, it opened up eyes to the government to understand, okay, well, we need to section off some of these frequencies for us. Um, that way, if anything, you know, tragic or whatever happens in the future, we're not struggling to try to reach one fire department or one police department or whatever the case may be. Um, so what that did for us was that kind of took away some of the frequencies that we had from those years past yeah. um, and kind of bundled us up um to a few and as years have gone on um there have been more that kind of um, been taken away so um you know we're working um you, we still got good frequencies whatever but um we're working with less uh, one of the things um I, I i don't know if anyone that's watching or whatever but i know we know um that there was times where uh, during service where, you know, there would be, you know, an ambulance 
truck where the you would hear it coming yeah. out of the speakers. Yeah. You know, like you would hear these. They were so like you know. Um, that's one of the things where knowing and understanding what where you are located because every location has its best frequencies. Um, so knowing that here in Colombia there are certain certain frequencies that works best for us that would be different um, mm-hmm. than it would be. Um, in Johnston or, you know, or in Greenville or in Swansea or whatever the case may be. Um, so understanding that, like we said earlier, my favorite, my favorite brand is Sure. And Sure has the simplest, in my opinion, way to understand what frequencies work best for what microphones in your area. Can um, you show them now? Yes, you can show them. Yes. <laughs> And, and 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 they understand this. They understand this uh, 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 big time. They understand this big time. So, uh, sure has this nice little tool um, that a lot of us um, that a lot of us use, uh, and is that's why sure is like one of our favorite brands because they make it yeah. super super duper easy. Uh, let's say if I went to the Shure's website, I'm going to the Shure's website. Uh, all right. So let me take this away. All right. So right now we're on Shure's website. So this is Shure.com. Um, if I go over to where it says support, um, I can go down to where it says um, online and software tools. So if we go to online and software tools, uh, sure, get tools that we can turn back around and use. Uh, one of the big A finder. I love this frequency finder. So you, it's very simple. You just click it. You go right into it. Once you're in the frequency finder and then just go to uh, uh, your question is about frequencies. Let's say that I wanted to see what the available frequencies were um, here in, uh, excuse me, uh, not here in Lexington where I live at, but uh, in Johnston. So I type in the zip code, type in the zip code, I hit it, I choose what series mics I'm actually going to be using. Um, in Johnston, so I have the BLX that I typically use, so I'm gonna hit BLX, um, and then I hit search, and it, it pops up wireless free I can actually buy. So, what that means if I go to Sweetwater, if I go to Z Sounds, or where, wherever music store I'm at, on the box of that unit, it actually tells you what band it's actually for. But not only does it tell me what band is actually for, it's actually telling me how many mics I can actually put on on that one band. So that means that I could buy typically six double units of an H9 and I can put up the nine mic. I mean, I can put up to um, 12 different mics on it. So um, that is one of the tools that I use. Um, one of the other tools that I use um, that I just uh um love using um i use another one where i actually use sure has a um sure has a software program that you can actually use and that software program is it's actually it's an actual program uh that you can run and in the program it actually shows you um how you can be able to turn back around and how you can use it uh let's see there we go so this is kind of like the pro version of it um the other version was the easy version this is the pro version so on the pro version it actually it goes a whole lot more in detail you have to do a whole lot more uh but the cool thing about it it actually shows you what the um uh I can put in TV channels, um, 
because I want to avoid the TV channels so I can actually pop in my zip code again. Um, once I pop in my zip code, um, I can hit search for TV stations. It's going to pop up all the TV stations in the local area. Um, I can turn back around. I'm going to hit save so that way I can add my TV stations in there. I can go and I can um, uh, go back to my frequencies. I can add whatever mic I want. So they even have AKG in here. So if you're doing a AKG mics or anything like that, you can figure out what, what you got and it gives you the models and you can pick and choose your models, all that good stuff. Uh, you can pick and choose your bandwidth. Let's say I wanted to do the nine. I can turn back around and add it. After I add it, I can calculate it. And what it actually does in this little window right here, it actually will show me what actually the frequencies that I can use. Um, so, um, you know, it allows me to zoom into it, zoom out of it. But uh, there we go. So it actually shows me uh, what's on what bandwidth, what can I use and what can I use. So um, there's great tools. So it tells me right here that the H9 that I'm buying is taking up this right here. Shows me if I run into that, it's going to be a problem. So mm -hmm. it's, I, I'm going to be running into problems and stuff like that. So all of these are, um, you know, uh, sure has some great things on their website. So I would just, you know, advise anybody to, um, to go on and take a look and see what they got all that good stuff so you can try to figure it out um, for finding the right frequency. Rob, what happens if we do not comply? You go to jail. <laughs> oh. <laughs> My bad. <laughs> no. <laughs> no. Um, so it's interesting that because we fell out of compliance uh, when it came in 2020. I went to the church. I was like, we just got a letter in the mail. I don't know if y'all got them letters. The letter came in the mail. <laughs> yeah. all this stuff. So, you know, I think manufacturers were sending them out and we got one. And I took a look at it, went upstairs and I started looking at the back because it'll tell you actually if you're out of compliance, if you follow within the um the megahertz or whatever on the back. They're all printed and all of them are different, you know, when they print them. So you can look and see you can have three BLX systems and they all got different <laughs> ranges. Yeah. On the back. yeah. <laughs> and I looked and I all of them were compliant except for one. And um, I was like, oh, I got to do something about this. Um, but what happens is you don't want to go into You just don't want to fall into any interference with any systems that are running. Um, because, you know, number one, you'll start. You're, you're, you should see some degradation um, degrade your quality degrading. Um, you may get some dropouts like Alex was talking about. Um, you may get um, you may get we used to get radio freak like straight up radio coming through our system at, at times. Um, and you just don't want to fall on the on the wrong side of the FCC. So the best thing to do if you currently have systems is to just to go ahead and upgrade them. I think when, when it first came out, sure was doing a um, like a discount you know, to upgrade and get a, a better, a system that was compliant. So um, the best thing to do is if you do have a system that is not compliant, because um, they, I mean, all that stuff got auctioned off and they fall under like wireless broadband and all this kind of stuff. So if your stuff fall into that, just, just go ahead and get it switched out and um, just to be compliant because you don't, you don't want FCC because there are fines. You could get fined if it, um, if it gets to the point where you're interfering, but you, we don't need to, you know, the Lord on our side, he, he gonna, he gonna, yeah, he gonna pay them fines because when they, um, when they start trying to figure out why they keep getting interference and they triangulate it at your, at your church and you trying to figure out where they come. Yeah. Okay. Be the laws of the land. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's, true, ain't it, Alex? that's in there. Yeah, that's right. Um, so I mean, one of the things. Um, one of the things that uh, I will say, um, like, because it happened to me. Um, I had a mic that was working perfectly fine in Johnson, perfectly fine. I'm like, okay, 
I mean, and it was one of my favorite channels too. It, yeah. it, I knew that you know if I walked up if I was MC and I was going to these two mics because they was my favorite. I had them tweaked just right and everything, and then all of a sudden they started going in and out, going in and out, going in and out, and I'm like, oh, don't tell me I got a frequency problem. So I actually and I like sure for this reason. Um, if you got a microphone and it's a sure mic, you can send it off and you can get it fixed. Um, um, they have a service center where they service mics. Um, so um, I took the mics and I sent it off to them. And you know, the mics are the wireless system is about eight years old. So I sent it to them and they were like, Oh, uh, yeah, the frequency in your area, uh, that worked, but the government bought up uh, X, Y, and Z. So therefore, now that mic, it doesn't work. And I'm like, oh, you know, so, uh, and, and I will say this one time they did look, look out for me and they, you know, they put new capsules on me, sent me a new mic instead of, you know, so they look out for you. But now yeah. um, uh, I, I guess I got to put it in the comments. If anybody needs a sure mic, uh, I'll put the bandwidth in because that way somebody will be able to use it. I, I know I can in Johnston. So, but it's, it's like we, we said, it might not be able to work in Johnston, but it might work in Columbia. It might work in a, you know, because different frequencies, you know, for different ranges and everything. Um, uh, my next question is, and I'm going to get them to help me out with this one. Uh, analog versus digital. I know there are now um, analog is what back in the day, you know, it had that little antenna. You had to stick up on the thing. I mean, on the mic, on I'm on the uh, cordless receiver, and you put it somewhere. And you had to get it just right. Um, and, and now we're switching to where it's digital. Now it's running in the same hertz that it is for. Um, your Wi-Fi routers and um, your Wi-Fi and your church and everything. Uh, so um, I know and I love the digital wireless. And the reason I love the digital wireless is because if it's looking for a channel, it actually searches for a channel. Mm -hmm. So you don't run with dropouts. Mm -hmm. That's the thing I love about the digital, um, going with the digital wireless. Yes, they do cost a little bit more, um, mm -hmm. um, but if it's going to save me the convenience from having to figure out, um, is this mic going to pick up? Am I going to have issues with it? Um, if, if Is the government going to buy that frequency? <laughs> uh, to get a digital mic. So, um, but, um, so, like this one that I have, it is digital. Um, but the one thing I love about it is that it finds the frequencies that, and it stays constant. So I don't have to drop it out. I mean, yeah. so it doesn't drop, uh, drop out. Now, one of the things I will say is that I do have to keep it 10 feet away from my wireless router. So if you got your wireless router near mm -hmm. it, you might want to move your, your wireless router about That's 10 right. feet yeah. away. Um, because if not, uh, those frequencies from um, the rack unit and uh, or from the receiver from the um, uh, wireless router will interfere with each other because it's going to run off 2.4, yeah. uh, which wireless routers do, or either um, um, the 5 uh, gigahertz. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. make sure that they're a safe distance apart so you don't get those interactions. Uh, and what I typically do uh, when I do cut it on, um, I have my I have my Wi-Fi already in place, all already running. Then I cut that on because then what it's doing is it's searching past yeah my Wi-Fi to make sure that it gives me a solid um uh, it gives me a solid signal. Yeah. Uh, mm -hmm. Rob or DeAndre about the analog and the digital. No, oh no, I I spoke first last time. Go ahead. Oh, no, I, I don't have much, um, but it, it brings up a good point, especially since we're talking about, uh, at least at our church, talking about getting away from the wire mics up front, um, talking about going wireless. And we have 
a number of wireless systems in our church. Uh, we have, of course, like the Wi-Fi that's running and most people can join um, 2.4, right? Because it's the, it goes further and all that kind of stuff. All right, well, then we got the microphones. Um, they're not running on 2.4, but we, well, we have the microphones, but we also have the X Vive system, which is the in-ear wireless monitors. That's 2.4. <laughs> that's yeah. that's 2.4. And then since I'm on this side of the church, the organ, and then like the drums and the, those guys, I have a um a pack, I think that's UHF, um, that I can actually put my headphones in. I can talk to the guys and they can hear me in the in ears. Um, so we got plenty wireless, and so it has me thinking like, I had this conversation to make sure that wireless, digital wireless may not be the best option for us because we are running like i said we have we have six of them we have six wireless in-ear monitor packs that we can run um and that might be a problem <laughs> if i try to replace five with um the digital wireless so yeah but that that's something to consider for sure yeah and, and like you said every, every situation is different right so you know, you, you think you see a big church, you know, this mega church on TV and everybody got a wireless and and they're got the in-ears as they're singing. So the, even the, the singers got the, you know what I'm saying? And you think, oh, we got to go there. Well, you know, yeah. number one, are you going to be willing to spend that money? Number one. And then number two, you don't know their situation in the area. So, you know, they have every area for frequency wise has, you know, like we were saying before you know, different things that we can comply with that they may not be or that they can comply with that we may not. So understanding your situation is mm -hmm. is, is extremely key um, to that. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I like that, you know, uh, what Alex was saying earlier where it finds the frequency for you, click that button and it'll let the, the letters of the number and it'll oh, zoom yeah. up, A7. You know, <laughs> and okay, that A7 it is. You, know, you don't got to try to, yep. all right, well, let me see, A1. No, they don't work. Okay, eight, you gotta do that. It, it'll find it for you, yeah. and then you know, and all you gotta do is just match it up. So I love that digital um, wireless stick to it. it. It makes it it like like you said before. It's a little more expensive, um, but if you have the funding to do it, it makes life so much more easier um, for you um, if you're gonna be running the sound and different things like that. So I'm gonna go ahead and finish it up, and you go ahead, got it to the next piece. All right. So I got two questions that popped up. Uh, mm -hmm. um, first question uh, comes from uh, Sister Jackson, all the way from Brentwood, Maryland. Uh, right. She asked, uh, "How do we, or or how do you know if your system is compliant?" One, um, I'll say this. So the FCC clearly. I, I was just matter of fact, I was on their website um, just to make sure I wasn't getting my facts right, but they. Like I said, in 2020, it all went, that's when it all went down. It, that's when they were like, hey, there's a certain set of frequencies that that is now unavailable for wireless. Y'all, y'all done um what it what is it called when they be um somebody staying in your house and they just be loafing? Um, <laughs> Freeload. Freeload. That's it. Y'all done y'all wireless uh manufacturer done freeloaded on these wireless. Uh, sections for a while now they've been auctioned off but they have the frequencies on it's in that 600 megahertz range where now you you literally those are now not available when they were available for us freeloading um microphone users so look on the back if you have a, your wireless I mean, your uh, microphone receiver is usually the one that's the closest to the mixing board or whatever it is it has the antennas on it, however many you got look on the back of there and read the back and see if um that range it's a particular range if that range is compliant for um for sure and if if your range is compliant then you're good if not then you need to um just take a look at it and see if, it, if it's compliant, <laughs> um, but that's but that's how that's how you would determine if um, your system they have the range um, on the back of the on the back of your uh, 
your device. Because mine, I think we had a bunch of them that were in the fives. We had like 587.3 to 589 point whatever. And they can use that range. We had a bunch of files, like all of our all of our wireless are sure um, when it comes to the wireless mics. And we have we have three wireless lapels. Um, and then we have three handheld. Um, and all of them was in in the 500 range, except for one was in the 600 range. And it was like, there's that one. So, yeah. Um, but just look at the back of your receiver. It'll tell you. Um, and I don't have the exact range here on the um, FCC website, but if you go to the FCC.gov and type in, you can type in the search wireless microphones. They got a whole brochure about it um, and what you can do. So, yeah. Yeah. And, and, and that's the thing, too, you know, like you were saying, you know, understanding. Um, what you have because being in this, I, I realize that they keep taking more and more away. So, I mean, we're going to be limited to like, you know, just two frequencies after what now I'm joking, but I mean, how it's looking, I mean, they taking them away. They are literally taking them away. So you want to make sure exactly. So you want to make sure that, you know, whatever you have um, that you this is something that I did. I'm just kind of technical like that. I, I would, I like to write my stuff down uh, mm -hmm. for what I have. So I have them um, on a flash drive and I, I know that might be outdated now or whatever too, but I have them stored somewhere. So I know what mics are what mm -hmm. all the different stuff. So, you know, and I, and I try to, you know, typically try to check it not all the time, but frequent enough to where I'm up to date to okay, well, this one is good. This one is good. Okay, this one is kind of close. So let me kind of be mindful. So, you know, that way you're not caught off guard because, you know, you could, if you're not paying attention, you know, if you're not complying all that stuff, you can come to church one day and that microphone or that frequency, whatever is on, I mean, you won't get nothing except for the fire trucks. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. You know, dispatch, we need you at such and such street. You know what I'm saying? He's like, why is it not, you know, because you wasn't paying attention. So, um, mm -hmm. you know, make sure that you keep an eye on it. Um, you don't have to be like me and write it down somewhere, keep it, you know, whatever. You don't have to check it as often as I do, but you know, you want to be on top of it and be prepared for any situation that way you're not, we have convocation coming up. You're not in the middle of convocation. All these people are here. And the next thing you know, you're like, well, why isn't it working? So, you know, always being prepared ahead of time is 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 key. So that brings us up to another question. Uh, what is the best mic for a preacher considering the various volume from preacher to preacher? Yeah, so how do you guys handle this? Because I know how I handle it. But uh <laughs> Uh, and I'm, I'm going to just go out and say how I handle this. Uh, I have one mic that's dedicated to the preacher um, in, in Johnson. So, like, um, Elder Gore has his one mic. And that one mic does nothing but stay on that pulpit the whole time. Uh, unless it's, I might need it for another instance. But for the most part, that mic only stays in that pulpit. Um, when another preacher uses that mic i'm on my ipad and i'm just hand on a fader yeah i'm gonna ride it wherever i need to ride it i'm mm -hmm. not gonna go, uh, I, if i need to take it up more i'm gonna take it down but typically uh when it comes to the eq of that mic i try to limit it to not change it at all um um if a preacher asks for for more, you know, bottom end, um, I might give him a little bottom end, but I know what I need to bring that back down to, or I have it saved in my settings. So when Elder Gore picks up that mic, I can just recall and store his and restore his settings right back to him. Um, but my fingers on that fader, and I ride it. I don't ride the gain. I don't do. Yeah. The, I ride the fader. The yeah. ride the fader. Um, all day long um uh but that's how i control 
the volume from preacher to preacher. Now, um, he has a mic that he uses for, um, he has a little lapel mic as well, a little clip on. Um, I did the clip on that came in the pack with the mic. It, it was all over the place. You know, you mm. put it, y'all know how it is. You, you, you the mic come with it. It's sorry. It's all the time. <laughs> you really can't get a, a, a good volume out of it. So what I end up doing, I end up buying him um, a better lapel. It was like a hundred bucks. I bought him a little better lapel mic. Uh, still was a shore. Um, plug right into it. It cut out all the feedback, all that kind of stuff. But that way I, I can give him a little bit more volume without it feeding back in the, in the, um, in the speakers and everything. But um, I do that the same way. I ride the fader. If I have to adjust it, you know, it is what it is, but I'm going to ride that fader. Um, I'll let either one of you guys tackle it. I, I can go real quick. So I I was similar. So when COVID happened, you know, church was shut down and all that stuff, whatever. But uh, being a part of the um, sound ministry, you know, Bishop didn't want to just strictly be at home. So he came to church on Wednesdays to do Bible study. And he still came to church on Sundays um, to preach his messages instead of being at home. So we were there every Wednesday and, and Sunday and he only had it dedicated for certain people. So the, the musicians and choir were the only ones there in the, in the service, whatever. So during that time, we kind of did an overhaul of our whole system. Um, and that's when we went to the, from analog to the digital board, we went from a lot of the corded mics to the wireless mics, um, all that different stuff. What I did was during that time, and I'm, I'm saying this to, to, to kind of save money for other people. So Bishop, he, he always had the handheld mic, you know, he was, he was part of the handheld ministry. He was <laughs> rocking that mic wherever he went, holding all that different stuff. And COVID happened, and then just the Spirit of God just told him to go to a lapel. So we got him, um, like Alex said, I got him a, a dedicated speaker pastor mic. It was I wrote on it tape, and I put on there pastor mic. And I had another one that was speaker mic. So that pastor mic was only for Bishop, mm -hmm. and the speaker mic was for whoever was on the pulpit. That's how I had it. Uh, dedicated and you know he had a little pale too uh, but then COVID happened and you know the spirit just told him go to lapel so you tried to lapel it didn't work like Alex said it was trash terrible um, so he decided to go to the um, you know one around the ear mm -hmm. and have the one here so then he started using that one and fell in love and this does not use the handheld mic no more so um, you know in cases like that not saying we wasted the money you know obviously we use it for other you know, uses now. Uh, but that's one of the things that we did. And he's the only one that uses it. So it's strictly set to him. How his voice is set, he has more of a, a baritone, deeper voice um, whenever he's speaking versus, you know, some other people who may be higher. Um, he gets loud at moments. Some people, they're just straight up loud um, and everything. So, you know, we, we have it strictly tailored to how his voice is for that. And, and that's one of the easy things that, you know, uh, I don't have to run into if someone else wants to use it. Um, they don't use his, you know, if they have to use, they would bring their own. We had this situation a couple of years back <clears throat> before a service where um, a pastor came and he brought his whole system. He brought his, um, his, his um, ear mic and he brought his whole, you know, receiver as well. So we got it hooked them up. It worked in our area, which was great. And he was a good deal for his, for his sermon. You know what I'm saying? So, you know, some people are like that COVID kind of, you know, had some people cautious. So, you know, instead of them using the church's own, they would bring their own stuff, whatever. So, um, you know, that, that's kind of how we did it. Um, you know, to kind of do that. But if I can save anybody some dollars, whatever, you know what I'm saying? Talk to your pastor, whoever, they kind of say, hey, you know, are you going to keep using this handheld or are you going to go to the lapel? Or if you're going to keep using the lapel or, you know, vice versa, whatever, you know, he may say, yeah, then, you know, tomorrow the spirit may say, no, you the other. You know, <laughs> hey, right. that's what we ran into. You know what I'm saying? So, you know, you got to roll with the punches, you know. So, you know, if anything, if, if you can have the choir mic off a little bit or you can have, 
you know, this off a little bit, but pass the mic. Pass the mic got to be right. So, you know, if he say he want to do something, you got to get it right. So, you know, that's 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 the kind of answer that question uh, for you, Sister Bell. Now, now, one thing I like is that um, – um, and shout out to Elder Date. Um, Elder Date's not on with us, but um, uh, Elder Date's great in Shelby, Shelby, North Carolina. But um, he called me when um, when Bishop Date had to preach, and he was like, "Hey, um, uh, brother Alex," he said, "I know y'all use the BLX in Johnston, uh, just like we use, you know, the BLX in um, in uh, Shelby." He says, uh, "Bishop wants to use his um, his headset." I said, okay, all right, cool. And he said, um, uh, what frequency are y'all on? And I'm like, mm. this is, this is the, the, the BLX, right? And I said, yeah. I said, just just bring the little, little pill and we'll plug it in. It's a four pin. So I took a picture of the four pin, showed him the four pin on the, you know, he was like, oh, that worked perfect. So when Bishop came and preached for our church anniversary, only thing he did was just take the wireless piece, I unplugged Elder's little pill, and we plugged in Bishop. <laughs> There were, you know, it, it was so much easier to be able to just to tag in, and the only thing I had to do is sit, is sit back and and retweak my EQ because now it's different. Mm -hmm. than, you know, just a clip on, so adjust the EQ, ride my fader, and that, and now and that was it. Um, you know, so um, any uh. Uh, we got a, another question, and while we're working on lapel, uh, uh, can you provide a specific uh, lapel model that we can use? Uh, I I will I would say this: there's a ton of different uh, lapel companies that you can um, um, uh, get, and a lot of them will ask you what type of tips that you use or what type of receiver that you use, so you can plug in. Um, um, uh, you can plug in that mic into that body um, body pack, so that way you can be able to turn back around and use it. Um, uh, I'm partial to sure. That's just me. Um, yeah. But um, I heard some um, some countrymen's that actually sounded pretty good, but they're expensive. <laughs> yeah, they, they up there. But yeah. Yeah, we, we use, um, I was trying to see if I could find it real quick, the ones that we use, but the Shure has been, you know, they they just they just work. <laughs> and like you said, you get those, um, you can you can go on Amazon or wherever and buy lapels all day long. I mean, you can, and they sound like trash. <laughs> they sound like, because they're going to pick up everything. They yes. I don't know what it is, but it's like, there's another pattern. It's called omnidirectional um, and unidirectional. These things, some of them, omni is going to pick up everything in the kitchen sink. And that's, <laughs> and that's what you don't want because you want a more focused and sure. I mean, just um, we've I've been there. I was like, you know what? A lapel is a lapel is a lapel. Yeah. And that's a lie. And come to find out it's not the truth. So, <laughs> so um, but yeah, this um, I think I think I think we all in agreement that you know the most I mean and, and sure and we're not just saying that we're not sponsored by them, um, although we yeah. we won't mind. Um they just they make reliable products, they've been doing it for a long time, and they are built to last. They just yeah. and they have incredible support. So um yeah. DeAndre, any one of them that you recommend particularly? I mean, you y'all y'all know I didn't say that like 14 times. I'm I'm a huge supporter of Sure. Um, you know, I wish I was getting a check from them to to say their name and support them as much as I have on this stream here. Yeah. <laughs> Fortunately, <laughs> you know, I don't get a check, you know what I'm saying? So I'm just going to say it one more time. Um, but you know, Sure, but I I would say this um, I um, think I think we went through I think three different lapels before we found the right one for Bishop. Um, you know, we tried the the, the hook going on the shirt, mm -hmm. and, and and that goes back to that pattern, man. I mean, if you don't have it right, 
every twist and turn, you're going to hear, you know, from the shirt, um, you know, you, you breathe just a little bit too hard. You're going to hear all of that. You know what I'm saying? So um, finding the right one, it may take some time. And, and even if you buy, you know, a lapel or Michael, whatever the case may be, you can always, um, you know, return it. Or this is something that we do too. If you know of the churches that are in need or that could use something that, you know, you bought that doesn't work for you, then, you know, reaching out and having a conversation with some other church that, Hey, we got, you know, um, these corded microphones that we don't use anymore. We got this lapel that didn't work for us. Would you guys, you know, benefit from using it? And it may work for them. You know what I'm saying? So it's not like you're wasting your money by buying different ones that work for, until you find the one that works for you. Um, it's just the importance of finding that one, you know what I'm saying? And you, you have different options to kind of get your money back or, or just bless another church or business or whatever. Uh, with, with with what you had that didn't work for you. So that that's something I would, you know, kind of say to that. Now, I just went to the website really quick um, just to check and see, um, um, you know, what was the most popular. Um, um, and out of the first, probably like eight, sure is like, got five on that list and so that just shows you i mean like they got different models like you you have different models because you have it from different situations and like i said they all got different pins on them so um you'll be able to take a mic and plug it up into you know a different system depending on what pin you actually need it um uh right so we don't went through a lot of peas so our next questions, well, actually, they're not questions. Um, they're just good up tips. Um, I know everybody <laughs> since the pandemic has invested heavily in wipes. Yes. Uh, um, and they wipe max down like it ain't no, like, yeah. yeah. Um, like all you hear is this. <laughs> I had to do that, <laughs> but yeah. that's all you hear. Uh, this after somebody get done, we, we get done, you know, talking or whatever. That's all you hear is them wiping the mic. Um, so now they're more sanitized. Uh, but uh, what other good up um, keep tips do you guys have? <laughs> Uh, well, you can wipe the microphone, but I will also unscrew it and kind of clean on the inside too. There's stuff that get in there, and, it, and we all know there's stuff because you got some people that sing. And so, one of the placement things that I've heard too is having the microphone like about like right here, like a, a fist. And that's about a good place. I've heard some people like this. It's a good placement. But we all know people that put that microphone right on their bottom lip. And I don't, with all the stuff that's going around, I don't recommend it. Um, <laughs> but some people like to put, they like to sit it on that lip, that bottom lip. They just sit it right there. And after everybody been screaming in that mic. So cleaning it, unscrewing that capsule, getting in there and 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 kind of cleaning that too because there's usually under this there's a little foam typically like a little piece of foam that you pull out and you may need to put some soap and water on that too. So clean that um but also like, like this rock. Mhm. Mm yeah, if what's under that? Your mm -hmm. Yep. Mm -hmm. Yep. Get that get that cleaned up. And um and so I, th I think that's one good upkeep. I would also say one of the first things I would do too, if you're going into any troubleshooting issues with your mic, um, you may see it fading out or it's just not strong as it used to be. Let's change the frequency. Usually um, we I, we had an experience where we was just having issues with our microphone. Like what's going on? It's popping and we're losing it. It's coming back, losing it, coming back. It was just a frequency. It just needed to be changed. 
changed the frequency and we had one of the old school. And I don't know if y'all remember this. It was um it was line of well, it wasn't line of sight, to, but you had to hold it up yeah. against the receiver. <laughs> <laughs> And and the bottom of it, you got to have it in front of it and and get it. So, but it's it's things like that. Um, just making sure the tester, like you mentioned, that's that's a good thing. Is we're talking about microphones, especially corded microphones, um, and being and just having having. I would I would say it'd be good to have a good routine in how you maintain your equipment in general, right? Um, one of the things we're experiencing, um, one of our snakes that we've had in a for. People who are not aware, a snake is a is a typically like a box or something that sits on the stage where you plug in microphones or you have outputs that go to speakers. But it's like a central hub that contains um, a female and, and male connections, right? So there's a snake that we have on our um, at our church, and I think it's it's on its last leg. It's it's starting to act up and so one of the things that we need to do is replacement when you start seeing things fail let's go ahead and replace it um deandre had another tip earlier get there on get there early you know and and take care of that things if you got church sunday morning and you got some time sunday saturday afternoon saturday morning get it done early go out there just make sure everything's right you know if you start heard of any issues, some squealing that was happening, maybe it was a frequency that was just kind of like, what's going on? Maybe somebody upstairs that you don't, they just bumped it up. You know, they they might have turned up the the kilohertz and it's just like at mm-hmm. 25K and I was like, what happened? So just kind of paying attention to those little things to, um, to make sure your services in general, they go off, um, minimize a lot of the distractions that can happen with the microphones. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. I, I would, you know, echo the same, you know, sentiments when he was saying about the cleaning tools. Um, <clears throat> one of the uh, things we we had a Sennheiser mic um, a few years back before we went all sure. And Alex just showed you guys the mic. You can un- unscrew it, and then on the inside there's the foam. Well, the Sennheiser mic we had, where you can unscrew it, but you couldn't get on the inside. It was like a whole one piece top right so there was no cleaning that and what i realized is over time you know you can wash your hands and all that good stuff whatever but then there are times where people will grab that mic and with with unsanitary hands this was pre-covid and all that gunk would just build up mm. you know so it didn't matter how much scraping with the old toothbrush i would do or get a a, a safety pin and try to get all that stuff out it was just in there so um that's one of the things too making sure the type of mic that you get if you can unscrew it and get in there to get underneath instead of just the outside that's 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 a key thing i mean it's not hurting anything if you don't whatever but that's one thing um to the same thing when it comes to um you know how you utilize your equipment obviously we're saying You know, sure, you can throw them out the window. You can knock somebody across the head with it and it'll still work. Right. But at the same time, you know, how many times do you want to do that? Right. So, you know, you will hope, hopefully no, no times, whatever. But if it does, you know, obviously whatever. But one of the things I had a a strict routine uh, when it came to how I handled my stuff when we had the corded mics. Um, I made sure that the cords were in a certain area. So if someone had to walk, that it wasn't all bunched up. Um, I would put tape over um, the cord so it would be as flat as possible to the ground um, until we moved to the wireless. With the wireless, um, you know, I myself would, um, during the week, I mean, I would find myself at the church on a Tuesday or on a Thursday, on a Friday at night after work and just would go out to the church and I would literally just say, okay, well, I'm going to practice this. I'm a, If this situation comes up, I'm mm-hmm. going to do this. Um, we had, when I took over as well, there was a bin, uh, one of those plastic bins that we had full of cords. And something I did was I went through every last one of those cords to figure out which one worked. I went through all of the microphones and I tested it. I mean, I literally made sure 
after that one incident I told y'all about where I was embarrassed because it wasn't working, I made sure it did not happen again. So I went through everything and we threw out some old cords and we bought some new cords, whatever. Um, this is another thing too, like I said earlier, is to make sure this is just me. You don't have to do it, but this is me. I made sure that I work directly with my musicians, right? So uh, what we had, you know, we would have rehearsals on whatever day, but I would get another day and I would just have a musician's rehearsal, right? So when we bought our new system, our wireless system um, in 21, I mean, I had musicians rehearsal all the time just to make sure that we were getting the best out of our um, equipment, you know what I'm saying? Because, the, you know, the piano player, he may like it a certain way and it may sound good in your ears, but he's like, no, nah, I, I like, I want you to do this. Okay. So I'm figuring out what he likes and then we found that perfect balance. Then I go to the bass player and do the same thing. You got to that drummer. I, luckily my drummer, you know, he, he's very cool, laid back. Sean is a good guy. You know what I'm saying? But at the same time, he liked what he liked, you know? So, um, those are some things, you know, <clears throat> excuse me, that that we we had to figure out with all the musicians um, when they had the talk back microphones. Um, we used some of those old wireless, I mean, wired microphones for the talk back. Um, and it took some getting used to um, because, you know, it's, you think, oh, what are you going to use? Well, how do you make a, a regular microphone a wireless microphone? It's, it's easy, but when you don't know what you're doing, you're like, uh, well, why is he, he's talking to musicians, he's saying this, you know, oh, this, this singer is terrible, you know, I'm just using it as an example, but he's coming out of the speaker, <laughs> you know, so, you know, if he's saying that, you know, he want to make sure that he's only singing to the other musicians and also not having it come through the live too. Yeah. So, you know, that a lot of that stuff, I did a lot of that on my personal time on my own going out through the week and also having those musicians rehearsals as well um, to where, you know, us and me, me and musicians, we were like, you know, peas in the pot. We, we knew what I knew what the drummer wanted at a certain time. He knew what I was looking for, all that different stuff. Um, and just kind of utilizing that, you know, it's cool to come out there on a Sunday morning, 10 minutes before service starts and click on the buttons and oh, everything's on. But if you can get out there during the week or if you can get out there an hour or so ahead of time just to make sure everything is what it needs to be and how it needs to be, you know, that's some things, too. Uh, one last thing when it came to um, I don't know how, how many people use wire mics anymore. I know we have those for the for us for the talk back but some churches they do have the wire um when you're rolling up the cords for it yeah. you know sometimes you know you can be a little heavy when it comes to the wrapping some people they would wrap it around that arm you know and it's as tight as possible next thing you know you're like why is it ripping you know what i'm saying it's because you know you had some you know heavy lifting you know boulder picking up guy that was wrapping around his arm you know what i'm saying so you want to be careful of of things like that, um, of that as well. So um, I learned one of the, our, our old bass player. Um, he taught me how to do it um, mm -hmm. and everything because he 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 was very very strict when it came to to the instruments and how to maintain that stuff. So he uh, y'all y'all know him, um, Anthony. So you know he he taught me. You know he said, "Hey, no, no." He saw me doing it one day. He said, "No, no, 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 no." Do it like this, and that kind of you know you know mm -hmm. prolonged the longevity of the equipment that we had. So. Um, that that's some tidbits um, that that I would throw out there for you guys as well. I mean, one of the things I wrote down two things that I feel that is very, very, very extremely important. Um, one is cables, and one is gaff tape. Mm. Gaff tape is going to be your friend, especially if you got to put it on the floor and you have to uh, tape it down to make sure that no one steps on it, that nobody trips, because you don't want it to be a liability mm -hmm. to where. Somebody tripped over a cable in the church, and now they're trying to sue the church. Mm. Um, gaff tape is going to be your friend. I ain't saying. Um, uh, <laughs> everybody ain't saying. Uh, uh, the next one is cables. Do not, do not, I repeat, do not skimp on your cables. Yeah. Don't just go out there and buy the cheapest thing because it's yeah. 20 bucks. Oh, it's a 20 foot cable, it's 25 foot foot cable, it's $20. I'm gonna just go ahead and do it. No, 
Okay. Go ahead and invest yourself in a, in a good quality cable. Um, um, I've I've come, and this is just my personal take. I come um, accustomed. First, I started using Planet Wave cables. I, I love the Planet Wave cables. I started using using the Planet Wave. Then I went to um, tried a couple months of cables. Uh, I mean, and I was spending money for them. You, you know, you you pay for the name. You know. That's what it is. Um, but, mm-hmm. but but then I fell on to um I fell on to my XLR cables or my mic cables. I fell on to um uh, actually liking pig hog cables. Hmm. And I I went to pig hog cables and I'm like, man, these, these things are these things are kind of tough. They're nice and thick. Um they soldered right on the ends, and um I'm going um I mean because um during the year. I think it's um, during the spring and the summer times and the, right before it gets to the end of fall, uh, we have outdoor services in Johnston. So um, I said I wanted to get a good quality cable that was going to last me and that I didn't have to worry about it, you know, cable messing up on me or anything like that because we're going outside, we're setting them up, we're using them outside. Uh, sometimes it is drizzling. Uh, mm-hmm. So... I need to make sure that, you know, those cables can hold up. I bought those big haul cables and I've used them for a year. And I just love them. Um, they're nice. They're thick. They're, you know, and my little trick of my little hat is I bought the pig. Uh, I bought the, um, the pig haul cables I got off of Amazon mm. because they're cheaper than buying them from the big retailers. Uh, yeah. So, and I mean, it's, the quality of cables. I mean, I was looking at getting some the other day, some 25 footers. And I mean, for the price of them, I was like, hey, this is spot on. This is what I need. So, um, but the quality of the cable that you use, um, um, I'm, I'm a firm believer of um, uh, making sure what's the purpose of me having, a, you know, $100 guitar or you know, um, a two thousand dollar keyboard, and the cables I'm using came from Radio Shack ten years ago, or yeah. twenty. Years ago, yeah, they cables for a long time. Uh, you know, so yeah. I'm going to get the sound that I got from that cable. Yeah. So, um, uh, if you're looking for a detail or a rich sound, just invest some more in the cables. I mean, especially if you know, um, like you got. 20 cables behind your mixer board and you don't want any interference with them, just go ahead and invest in a nice thick cable. It only got to go like three feet. Yeah. So, uh, you know, yeah. just, just make sure that you're investing in your cables and you got good cables. And like I said, a gaff tape, make, make sure. And the thing I love about that gaff tape is you can put it down on carpet and then as soon as you're done, yeah. you pull it back up. There's no residue on the carpet. Yeah like that there's no glue sticking down on it or anything like like that the gaff tape is is wonderful yeah. and we actually sell it in um i've seen it in different colors so i've, I've seen it in white and i think like guitar center one time and i also seen it in black so. yeah uh, i want to oh go ahead, yeah. go ahead Rock. i was going to say um just deandre had mentioned about wrapping the cables that had wrote that down um the that's so huge because we we have the opposite we ha- occasionally it happens where a person will wrap them up real tight mm-hmm. and they wrap them up like right around their fingers because all you're doing is, is putting kinks in the cable in in the, in the wires is going on in the side of it so looser ones and and i was taught i don't know who taught me how to you know you you to wrap it you know to, so it mm-hmm. won't, yeah so all you got to yeah. do is you can throw that cable out and it'll just go a straight mm-hmm. line. It's yeah. just, um, but the last thing I would say too, um, and that's my last thing is um, we, what we did during the pandemic, um, that was a great opportunity to get other stuff mic'd up. So we mic'd the drums up. We brought it, we got another mixing board um, and we sent everything down there, mic'd everything to that mixing board and then sent it up to the house, um, to the main house mixing board um but diagram the system that was one of the things that i did um just to okay 
this one goes here. This auxiliary sends it there. The organ's coming over here and it's coming out here. So it goes to the house, comes down this. And so that was like, anytime something starts getting weird, I could just go back to the diagram and say, okay, this is ox one, this is ox two. And, and this was on top of getting a, um, what is that? A uh, label maker. Yeah. yeah. The label maker is like, that's, you know, you got to have a label maker. <laughs> a label maker between that and, and diagramming it all out, um, that like just saves so much time and troubleshooting. Um, especially if you have to come behind, somebody have to come behind you and try to figure out what's what. So. Yeah. Yeah. That's I easy one, thing, yeah. Yeah. I know one thing I did in Johnston was um, when I had to send our mixer off for repair, um, I went and I, like, like you said, I got a label maker and yeah. I label, uh, I put a label on every, on, on every, uh, the um, cable, all, the cable. You know, on my, all, on my mic cables and all my yeah. cables, you know, because I needed yeah. to be able to still plug in, hook it up, yeah. play it, go home and address it because the USB, I had a problem, I had an issue with my USB then. So I had to then take it home, unplug it and take it home, fix it, and then bring it back and hook it up again. So, I mean, labeling does dramatically help. Um uh, I would like to personally thank you guys, uh, both of you guys, for uh, joining us on the night. I know we don't went two hours, and I know us we can go more, but uh, but uh, <laughs> it's not a night. Yeah, yeah, we can go more. Yeah, we can go more. <laughs> uh, uh, I want to thank everybody that joined us on this evening. Um, uh, and like I said, if you got any more questions, shoot us the questions in the comments. Um, uh, all of us can still see them even after it's over with and we can be able to comment back with you to make sure that, you know, um, um, that we're being good stewards of the information that God has given us and giving it right back to you as well. Um, you know, because that's what we're here. We're here for one another. We're here to um, um, to help out one another and to make sure that, you know, that we are perfecting um, uh, the mediums that we actually have. So um, I want to take the time. Thank you, Rob. Thank you, uh, DeAndre, for jumping on. Before we leave, um, I am going to ask Rob, if you would, um, uh, if you would just lead us in a closing prayer. Um, that way, you know, and like I said, if anybody have any questions or anything like that, please let us know. Um, don't feel don't feel that your question is not, you know, it's not valid. <laughs> Um, you know, we want to be here to be a help to one another. Um, um, and, you know, let us know if you got any suggestions for any other live streams that we're going to be doing. Um, just for a word of announcement, our next live stream is going to be on May the. It's going to be on May the 22nd and on May the 22nd, I have the privilege of having um, all the way from Jacksonville, Florida. No, 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 but my little brother, uh, Jonathan Lassay, uh, Pastor Jonathan Lassay, uh, he is be on here because we're going to be talking about Screen Yard and we're going to be talking about the ins and outs of Screen Yard and how to use it and how to use it effectively. Um, uh, because Screen Yard, there is a free plan. So I actually started out with the free plan on mine, you know, so uh, it all depends, you know, on finding something uh that works um for you and you know we want to make sure that we can um <laughs> i hope you've seen that comment rob in the in the yeah no. <laughs> or i'm scared i didn't see it <laughs> yeah they 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 have a love for rob's lighting tonight uh wow. so um, this is my shameless plug okay. uh uh if Feel free to visit Rob's um, photography page. He's wonderful at it. I'm sorry, it's a shameless plug, uh, but uh, it's, it's shameless because I have no shame in it. Uh, so uh, he does great work. He does great work. Um, but um, yeah, so Rob, if you would just lead us in a word of prayer, and then we'll see all you guys on the 
uh, on the next one. Absolutely. Let's pray. Father, we're thankful for allowing us to um, meet here online tonight. We're thankful for the information that's been shared. Thank you for the experiences that we had, um, knowing that we just didn't go through those experiences, learning about equipment and and uh, different situations for ourselves, but it was for your glory, it, but it's also for others to uh, learn and to perfect their craft and, and to um, be in a service that um, is minimized distractions and all these things to give you the most glory and the most excellent um, service that we can. And we do that with the information that we have and then we apply it. And it, again, not for our glory, but it's for your glory. So we pray that we, all the words that's been spoken, all the information that's been gathered, that we'll take it, that we'll apply it, that we'll, it'll sell in our hearts, that we'll, we'll do the service and your services. We'll do them well in your eyes. In Jesus name we pray. Amen. Amen. Like I said, we thank you guys for joining us, and we'll see you the next go-round. All right.